Hey, MCE crew, the U.S. government has lost its damn mind, okay? Literally. Joe Biden, believe it or not, has nominated a committed communist to the position of controller of the currency, the United States currency, the capitalist country, okay? This woman, Soleil Amarova, and God, I hope I pronounced her name right, because if she comes to power and finds out that I pronounced her name wrong, you know how these communist types are. She might want to send me to a gulag or to uh, Siberia. In any event, the Cornell University Law School professor's radical ideas might make even Bernie Sanders blush. She graduated from Moscow State University in 1989. Remember that year. She graduated on the Lenin Personal Academic Scholarship. Lenin. Vladimir Lenin. Personal Scholarship. 30 years later, she still believes the Soviet economic system was superior. That tells you right there she's a damn fool. Because if she thinks the Soviet economic system was better, first of all, why didn't she stay in the Soviet Union? Why is she here? And second of all, why doesn't it exist anymore? If it was better, why did they decide, the Soviets, the Russians now, why did they decide to abandon their system? But she thinks it's superior. And she also thinks the U.S. banking system should be remade in the Goss Bank's image. The Goss Bank was the Soviet National Bank. This is what we got running this country. Now, mind you, if she is nominated, which I have no reason to believe she won't be, She'll have the purview over 1,200 financial institutions in this country, and she'll be able to do some damage, okay, in terms of trying to reshape things in her little Soviet image that she was too chicken shit to stay in the country where she actually uh, loves their ideas. You know, if I love something, I'm going to go into that environment. If I'm advocating for something, I'm going to be ensconced in that environment. Uh, so, Ms. Amarova, this is important. Ms. Amarova thinks asset prices, pay scales, capital, and credit should be dictated by the federal government. So, she says that, you know, it should be dictated by the government. Credit, pay scales, capital. So, that means if you want a business loan under her way, you'd have to petition the federal government. Not a bank, but you'd have to go to the federal government and try to get this money. And if you did that tomorrow... Can't you imagine the government saying, well, hey, look, we take a look at everything. Um, by the way, have you taken a certain medication lately? And if you say no, then you know what will happen to that application. Oh, oh. Games, man? Hey, I'm fucking somebody up. In two papers, Ms. Amarova has advocated expanding the Federal Reserve's mandate to include price levels of, quote, systematically important financial assets, unquote, as well as worker wages. Now, what is a systematically important financial asset? How about real estate? She wants the government to set price levels on real estate. You don't get to dictate what you're going to get paid for your house or, you know, what you're going to put your house on the market for. Market forces don't get to play any role in that. The government decides. Amarova um, and her minions, they decide. Worker wages, that's the other one. So forget private companies actually setting wages based on, uh, you know, circumstances in their area, uh, competition for employment, things like that. Forget all that. Let, uh, let this university professor do it. I mean, hell, it worked perfectly in the faculty lounge when she was talking to the other professors, right? So it should work in the real world, right? Right? It should. In a recent paper called The People's Ledger, Amarova wrote that the Federal Reserve should take over consumer bank deposits. Consumers, you and I. So that your checking account, okay? They should take that over, the Federal Reserve. Quote, effectively end banking as we know it, unquote. This is what she says. And become, quote, the ultimate public platform for generating, modulating, 
and allocating financial resources in a modern economy, unquote. Now that last part, allocating financial resources in a modern economy. Let's go back to her wanting to control the price of housing. So let's say you want to buy a house, okay? Well, the federal government is in on it now. You need a loan. Well, now we get to tell you where you can live. We get to tell you how big of a property you can own, okay? Um, we get to dictate, we the government get to dictate the loan terms. And oh, by the way, if you're not conforming to other things we might want you to do in society, then you are not qualified for that home loan, okay? That's how this government is working today. They're actively going about gleefully even, even separating people from their employment. What makes you think they will not return, return to a system of redlining? Remember, the banks told black people during the 40s and 50s that there were places with they could, 40s, 50s and uh, earlier, there were places that black people could not live in this country, that HUD would not approve loans, that were for black families in certain areas. That's why I always get a kick out of when the, the federal government charges a bank with redlining. And maybe they are, but it would take a, uh, the federal government to know that because they were the biggest redliners. So if you don't think we could return to a system like that, then you're not paying attention because, quite frankly, we're doing it right now. We're just not basing it on skin color yet. Okay. Uh, you let this type of attitude get into power and you're going to see all sorts of things you thought you'd never see. She also wants the U.S. to create a central bank digital currency uh, as Venezuela and China are doing and to redesign our financial system to turn the Fed's balance sheet into a people's ledger, she tweeted this summer. A people's ledger, when they use that word peoples, the People's Republic of China, okay, it's not about the people. It's about the collective. It's more about the government. And as I said in a previous video, you get in the way of the Chinese government, they'll steamroll you. Okay. Um, they will roll right over you just like they rolled over that guy in Tiananmen Square with a tank, with a military tank. Now, some of you may be too young to remember that. Look it up. I'm not going to put it on the channel because, you know, Google might have an issue with it. Uh, so we're not going to put it on the channel right now at least not in this video so this is what we've got uh this is what we're looking at i have no reason to believe that this woman will not be nominated she will pass the muster the democrats have control of things and they'll slide her right in to control 1200 financial institutions with a degree hanging on her wall from a soviet institution of higher learning uh that she paid for with the linen personal scholarship. Think about that. This country is headed in a very weird direction and it's very blatant what's going on. And if you think that you're going to like socialism and socialism is just a kind of a bridge to communism. You think you're going to like any of that. Find someone. I think I know, try, try, I know a few people who came out of those systems. Maybe interview them. And um, I know this audience doesn't really need a primer on that because you're smart. You know damn well that we don't uh, need communism or socialism in this country. Uh, and for those of you, well, we already got socialism. We got social security. You need to go and read a dictionary and understand the definition of socialism, which is the government seizing the means of production, which is what she wants to do with the financial industry. Okay. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon.